Hi, welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Weekend's done, three points in the bag, that's what it was all about. I mean, also got a, a chance to take a look at all of the other teams in the Premier League um, over the weekend. And you can see it's going to be a competitive league, to, league um, this year. Watched the game yesterday, um, Liverpool and Chelsea. You know, I mean, um, decent, both of them playing better. But, you know, you can see they're going to be more competitive, especially Chelsea, Spurs, um, you know, different style of play. So it's going to be a more competitive league this year. But Arsenal off to a winning start. And that's all that counts. Three points in the bag. And also, um, what it showed you at the weekend is the value of having a good squad. You've got to have a good squad. I know a lot of times, you know, Fans will be like, well, he, we, you know, if we buy him, where's he going to play? And if we buy him, where's he going to play? You saw it at the weekend. Look at some of the injuries. Look at some of the injuries we've got. Timber at the weekend going down. We don't know how bad that's going to be yet. Hopefully not too bad. Um, Gabriel Jesus out, you know, probably until maybe even September, right? Um, I, even looking at some of the other teams, Aston Villa, who spent a lot of money on their squad over the summer, um, Tyrone Ming's going down. He's out. You know, that looks like a like a quite a bad injury. He's going to be out for a while. Um, Buendia, one of their main players, um, out. Long-term injury now. So the value of having a good squad is very, very important because injuries play a part. And then, of course, you've got the Champions League come in. So it is really, really important. So, and I think in the case of Arsenal, to... Bring in extra players in this transfer window. It is starting to look like they really do need to sell some other players. You know, I mean, get some deals done, you know, or, or even at least know that some of these players are going to be going for a high value. Then they can use that and maybe bring in a couple of others if, you know, one, maybe two before the window closes. That certainly seems to be the way Arsenal are operating. The big high value um, players that they've got for sale are Balogun and Kieran Tierney. Balogun, as we know, has been subject to um, offers already. I was I was sort of digging down deep into the whole um, Inter Milan deal. Now, Inter Milan offered a two-year loan deal plus £30 million. Pounds. I mean, no wonder Arsenal turned it down. A two-year loan deal. And that just goes to show that they don't really have much money in Inter Milan to play with, despite getting to the final in the Champions League last year. They got a lot of financial issues. Um, so that was turned down. The other one by Monaco, straight £34 million, but that also turned down. Arsenal looking for at least 45 to £50 million for Balogun. And they're looking for that because, you know, they, they don't want to have money to spend on other players if necessary. Uh, Spurs was said to be, you know, hovering around, looking at a deal to to um, to sell him. And it was interesting reading in the comments yesterday, um, the other day when I asked you guys the question, would you sell him to Spurs? A lot of you were saying yes, but lots of money, big, big money. But yes, we'd sell him to Spurs. Um, that was quite interesting. Um, the other high-value player, of course, is Kieran Tierney. Now, he's for sale. As I said on yesterday's show, you know, he's not figured even in the squad at the weekend. Um, Zinchenko's coming back. He's ahead of him. You know, Tommy Asu's ahead of him. Uh, you know, uh, let alone Timber now. Yeah, so um, he's going to be sold. But also, again, looking for £30 million for him. Real Sociedad came in, but they only had a, a loan deal on the table. Again, also not interested in loan deals. Um, they don't want that. Celtic as well. Loan deal, not interested. Celtic, who'd love to take him back, ideally. They can't afford to um, make the signing of Kieran Tierney. So that's not going to happen. Um, I think in the case of Kieran Tierney, it's going to be £30 million pounds or he stays put. Or at least 25 to £30 million. But you've got to get into that sort of region before Arsenal are going to entertain it. Because as I said, they would like to get the money through the door so that they can use on some other targets. And these are the two sort of players where they will get a lot of money for. Now, if they get that money in, will they go after Nicola Barella? That seems to be the one over the last couple of days that has really, you know, perked up interest. Um, we know that Arsenal tried to, in the Balogun negotiations, use the fact that they would like to bring Barella to Arsenal 
um, which was knocked back completely by um, Inter Milan. But what if Arsenal went in with a cash offer for him? We know that previously Newcastle, when they were trying to get Barella before they got Sandro Tonali, they were offering, um, what well, I think it was about 40 million. And Inter was saying, no, we want 60 million pounds to even entertain it. That, of course, um, Newcastle knocked back and they went after and got Tonali in instead. And he looked good at the weekend, Tonali. Um, should Arsenal move for Barella? Inter Milan at that time wanted about £60 million. If you look at what Caicedo's going for, £115 million after one good season, surely a £60 million would represent good uh, a good bit of business by Arsenal. I mean, I know he's older, he's 26. Um, obviously, Caicedo's younger. But, you know, for a top-rated holding midfielder, who just played in the Champions League. That seems like a good fee. He's an international as well for Italy. Um, I don't know if Arsenal are going to move for him. I don't. I really don't know. I just There's lots of speculation around. As I said, they did inquire about him as part of the Balogun deal, so that means there is interest. But let's see um, if there is any development in that interest. And if he did come in, what would happen to Jorginho? Because um, surely if Barella came in, that would spell the end of Jorginho because, you know, you basically have, you know, Declan Rice who can play as a holding midfielder, even though he's sort of playing further forward at the moment. You've got Thomas Partey, of course, who plays in that position. You know, if you brought in Barella as well, one of them's going to have to go. Um, and it would probably be Jorginho would have to be sacrificed, I guess. Um, there were rumours linking him with a move to um, Fenerbahce in Turkey uh, a couple of weeks ago, but this was uh, knocked back by his agent who said, no, he's happy at Arsenal. He wants to stay. Mikel Arteta really likes Jorginho. I don't know. I, I think maybe the Barella thing for me was more Arsenal just seeing if they could do something, you know, um, cheeky with the deal they were trying to do for Balogun. Whether they'll go all out for a player like Barella right now when we're pretty stacked in that position, I really don't know. But again, Mikel Arteta and Edu have pulled off some surprise deals this transfer window. So who knows? Um, Gabri Vega um, is still being linked with a move to Arsenal. Arsenal got a little boost if they are to go in and get him in the fact that Napoli were the favourites to sign him. Um, but they were selling or sort of banking on selling uh, Petro Zielinski to um, Saudi Arabian team Al Ali, but that deal fell through at the last minute. Um, he's no longer moving. Apparently, his wife said, "No, I'm not going to Saudi Arabia. I want to stay in Italy." Um, so that's not happening. And does that affect now them going for Gabri Vega, which now all the uh, publications out there are saying, "Well, great boost for Arsenal. They can go and get Gabri Vega." Although Arsenal have not bid nothing yet for Gabri Vega. Um, Super talented player, said to have a release clause of around about £34 million. But will Arsenal make a move for a player like this? So many players who can play in that position. We've got Martin Odegaard there, number one. You've got Smith Rowe who could play in that position. You've got Fabio Vieira who can play in that position. Will we go and add another? I mean, again, as I said, Mikel Arteta spring surprises. You would not have thought he'd go and get David Raya when we've already got, you know, a goalkeeper in Aaron Ramsdale, but he's dealing with strict and high quality competition for places. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you never know. So a um, little boost for Arsenal if they do want to go after Gabri Vega. And what about this one? Mohamed Kudos has been heavily linked with a move to Arsenal, um, but he played at the weekend, scored at the weekend from Ajax. And um, his manager was saying that, listen, we've had no offers. Um, He's, you know, currently, you know, we, we're intending to keep him. But it was interesting yesterday that they hijacked a deal to um, for an ex-Arsenal player, um, Chuba Akpom, who had a great season last year, top goal scorer um, in the championship. Um, he was set to join um, Lons, who'd been looking for a striker. And at the last minute, Ajax came in and hijacked the move. And um, True Backpon is now joining Ajax. Great move for um, True Backpon. Good kid he is as well, right? Um, fantastic move for him. But where does that leave Kudos? I mean, they don't exactly play in the same position. But, you know, 
Um, Chuba Akpom's sort of a striker, can play as a second striker, plays as an attacking midfielder. That sort of similar role to what Kudos does. So does that sort of show that they're sort of preparing for life without Kudos? They did have as well, you know, I know the manager saying, you know, he's not on the move anywhere, but they did have this deal in place with Brighton where they accepted, you know, Brighton's bid of £34 million. It's just that the player has not agreed any terms, doesn't really want to move to Brighton. So could Arsenal still pounce if they want to get Kudos in? Again, one we're going to have to watch with interest from now until the end of the transfer window, which closes on the 1st of September, not too far away now. We'll be keeping you up to date with everything that happens. Thanks for watching the show today. Um, don't forget you can't miss a thing um, by keeping it locked here on AFTV to do a transfer with an Arsenal. Also, um, don't forget to check out all of our videos from the weekend, some great interviews after the game um, against Nottingham Forest, some controversial ones. I mean, I thought, I thought the performance was okay. Could have been a bit better in the second half, but it's the first game of the season. Some of the fans thought different. Check it out. It was brilliant. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.